Good morning, Cyber Traders. Welcome back for the long 4th of July weekend. Good to see you, Mark. Ben, good to see you. Grant, Ken, Chuck, everybody. Look at those great traders. Welcome back. Hope everybody's all ready to go back to work. I tell you, I am because uh, that was one long ass weekend. <laughs> good to see you, Lawrence. Good to see you, Lita. Everybody. All right, so uh, let's get to it. Um, first of all, a couple of things that are going to be going on this week. Don't forget, Traders Talk, just uh, let you know. Just got those upcoming events that are going to be up there on July 9th. Uh, we got live trading with Fausto on July 11th. And don't forget the Trading Summit is coming up September 10th to September 12th. I know a lot of you guys have been reserving your seats for it. It's going to be a, a nice explosive one. It's always a great event. Look forward to seeing you guys there. Now, what happened on Friday, which was almost like, you know, it was totally predictable what was going to happen on Friday. Uh, especially we had great job numbers that came out. Stock market is almost going to be testing a new high. You know, one thing I love about um, and the opportunity you guys have is that by me living here in New York and, and uh, you know, being, you know, uh, surrounding myself with people that are in the industry, because remember, this is the financial capital of the world. You know, in, you know, in my country club, a lot of the traders, people that go there are traders from big, big, big funds. And they all have a different you know, perspective of how the market works or how they trade the market. And let me tell you, they all said the same exact thing. They all said that um, the market looks higher. Market definitely looks higher. So, um, you know, and, you know, you see the job numbers coming out. You see what's happening in the market and everything else. So, listen, the swing trades are, are looking pretty good too also. But the day trading, you know, other than having what happened last week on these holidays, hopefully we learned a lot, but there still was some opportunity to make some money on some stocks, but we're looking pretty good as to how things go so far. But let's look at a couple of stocks. I'm going to get to this SGMO in a little bit because um, this was a pretty predictable pre-market trade. I know a lot of you guys trade it. We'll talk about it, and but I want to talk about what happened on Friday. First of all, let's start off with the KPTI trade right there. So the KPTI was a great, great short. Let me fix this right here. You can see this stock at 9 o'clock went from like 1040 all the way down to around 860. Stock had a big, big run up from 6 all the way to 10. It was a great short. It wasn't hard to borrow. I know a lot of you guys did great on it. Um, some of you guys didn't kill it. You didn't have to. I told you that's something that was going to happen. It was going to be an easy market to trade. There's, you know, a lot of traders put their assistance in and they don't like to ruffle the fe feathers and whatever it is. They just, the trend is a friend, they won't buck it. And that was a pretty good one for a lot of you guys. The RVLV was another one uh, on Friday. Bring that up here. That one was also moved pretty nicely. That was a good afternoon runner. And I know a lot of you didn't want to stick around on a Friday, especially it was beautiful on Friday, gorgeous. But that had a really nice run from the morning all the way going into the afternoon. That was a typical chart of what we trade in the market. You ran up the first hour from 35 all the way to 37, flatlined, which you know from following the cyber clock that everyone has or, the, or have the cyber uh, uh, clock on the mouse pad. And then what, after 2.30, 2 .30, 37, all the way to about 39, just a great little mover right there. So it kind of worked out pretty well for all of us um, in the market. I know you guys did pretty well. Wasn't a lot, wasn't a lot, but more than enough what we need. Now, what's going on this morning? I want to start off with this SGMO because this is a pretty unique stock. Um, I know a lot of you guys traded already in the pre-market. I just want to bring up the chart right here. And if you go back um, to my, ch uh, my chat, uh, at 8.40 in the morning, I'm just going to copy that and put it back in the chat room. But at 8.40 in the morning, I says ice order at 13.80. Now, how do I know there was an ice order at 13.80? Well, a lot of us didn't really see it as much um, on the level three. But on level four, uh, when I go right here, you could see that right here, there was a big, big seller right there. And that was at the... 30, 1380 right there, and I saw that order that was sitting out there, and that's why it dropped off from 1380, went all the way back down to 1327. So guys, remember, when we're trading, if you didn't have a game plan on that and you didn't see that big order out there, you'd have got really crushed on that one. And uh, it was a nice profit. Listen, going from 30, 1325 to 1380, you know, pretty much there's your day's pay. 
But um, that big ice order out there really pushed down that stock pretty quickly. And remember, it's all about having a game plan. But anyway, that stock is going back on my watch list. It still it is up to 13, 16%. Almost a half a million shares already traded. You do got nice old ice orders everywhere in it. So I'm, I am going to keep it back on my order. Um, I, I actually, right now, as of right now, I don't see any buying going on right now. I see a lot of selling coming in there. I see a big ice order just popped up at 1340. So uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Is he on here in the matrix? No, he's not even on here. It's on. It's on my. Le it's on my level four order. All right. So that one looks pretty good. Um, the O was it O A S M. That one also um, big volume everywhere on level three. There's some nice orders. Two hundred thousand shares up to a twenty two percent cheap little stock. Good little spread. It looks like it's got some support levels right around here, around the two forty ish. You know, maybe a little bit lower in the 30s. You could see it from yes, from la uh, from Fridays. So it looks like that one's holding up pretty well. That one looks pretty good. The GNCA. That one also um, up a little bit, up 4%, 40,000 shares. Some of you remember the stock. If you look here in the long term we um, chart, we traded the stock one from five all the way to about 11 in two days. So we know the stock does move. Go back to your journals and see what's up with that. You know, like I said, it doesn't look like it's doing much now, but because we, we trade in the past, these things some, sometimes come out of the woodworks. And uh, this, was, this one just got decimated right here. I don't know if she's on your short list or whatever, but, you know, um, it's not a pharmaceutical stock, so we know that they do come back, <laughs> all right? That's a good one. Good spread. Million shares. Down 20%. Just took a big, big hit. Looks like it's got some support levels here. I see some big buyers hovering here. But uh, if you look on the level three, you could see there's a 9,000 share seller, 4,000, you know, 4,000, you know, a lot of sells going on. I want to see, but, but I want to see the holds of support. But as of right now, I'm seeing a little bit of a Fausto flag. And then, um, you know, about regarding about swing trading, um, I want to just bring this one stock up here. I don't know if you guys, uh, you know, looking for some blue chip stocks, but I was, I was just watching um, Fox Business and, you know, the one, of, there's, there's not very, very, Many newspapers I would actually would read when it comes to in finance, um, but there's one that I give a lot of respect for, and it definitely has some great writers, and that is the Barons. And uh, Barons, you know, is you know only comes out on the weekend. Um, I've been you've been reading it and following it, you know, since the day I started trading, and they 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 have the one of the writers on there, and he was saying that you know. Uh, Delta is actually a pretty good buyer on that stock. Uh, Delta, Delta is actually a really good buy. So keep an eye on Delta. The only thing I have an issue with it, it's got to break this resistance levels at 60 bucks. So we'll keep an eye on that. And then um, also, yes, Ben, uh, they also were talking about Apple too, Ben. Ben's just putting that little chat right there regarding about uh, Apple. And I think they put that on a, on a he put that on a sell uh, on Apple, if I'm almost positive, Ben. So that was a couple of blue chips that he pointed out. So uh, anyway, listen, it's not a lot going on. It's typical for a Monday morning, especially coming up from a weekend, but I'm expect uh, I expect it to getting pretty volatile as the market opens up. And then tomorrow it's going to be a, a nice full day, and I think everything's going to go back to normal by then. All right, everybody? In the meantime, we'll see you back here at 2.30 uh, for the afternoon meeting. And uh, I know we have a lot of new traders that are joining us today. Listen, most important thing you need to do is just look, listen, and learn and talk to your education advisor so he tells you exactly what's going on. Remember, I know everybody wants to trade. doesn't mean you should, okay? And uh, But the only way to know that is to see if other people make money. So don't look. Don't count our money. See what everyone else does, all right? And, every, and all the fellow cyber traders that are here, see something, say something. That's what it's all about. Good luck, everyone. Happy trading. We'll see you back at 2.30.